This is a South African-made, armored and enhanced version of one of the most popular boots on the entire planet. Let's pretend these Hoka's are trail runners. They're cushioned, they're lightweight, they're lined with Gore-Tex, they allow you to easily fly over rough terrains and trails as you go for a run. But what if we had to build trail runners for African Rangers? One of the most dangerous jobs of all time, where one of their biggest duties, of course, is to stop poachers. The regular Hoka's wouldn't do. They're not armored enough, they're not tough enough. We need to be able to run over giant thorns, chase hurt animals and poachers and run over fire sometimes, of course. And these are what you get when you need to make a trail runner for an African Ranger. They're very cool. African Rangers are in an all out war. It is estimated that two to three African Rangers are killed every week by poachers in Africa. And on top of all of that, African Rangers oftentimes don't have adequate food or equipment, which they need to protect, for lack of a better term, some of the most legendary creatures that Earth has to offer. The big fat ones, the small skinny ones, the quick ones that go underground. Which one am I? <laughs> this handsome devil is Gareth Crouch. He is a third generation shoe and boot maker and a former walking safari guide. He he owns or is part of, I, I don't want to say the wrong term, both Crouch Footwear and more importantly, the brand that we're talking about today, Jim Green. This boot is not just the brainchild of Jim Green. This is an amalgamation of recommendations from the African Rangers on what they would need in a perfect boot. It is built by them. And my favorite thing is South Africa has one of the most famous boot silhouettes in the world. You've seen it, you know it, you love it, you're probably interested in buying one. And this is simply an armored version of that. And today we are diving into that. So without further ado, let's hop into today's agenda. Number one, Jim Green is not named after a man. It's named after a tiny frog along South African rivers that is often eaten by fish. We'll jump into that real quick. I mean hop into. Number two, the Feldskoon Felly is considered the greatest boot ever designed for arid climates. It's also the great grandfather of this boot. But more importantly, when I say the last name of the guy that brought it to Britain and the US, you'll go freaking nuts. Number three is of course the African Ranger itself. We're going to focus on how this boot was armorized from the original boot it was based off of. I'm just making up words left and right today, but essentially the boot that this is based off of is now considered a casual boot. It was sneakers before sneakers. So how do you make that into an armored trail runner? And finally, we always have to answer the question, are they worth it? These boots are probably a lot cheaper than you think when you compare it to other boots of this type, but still, I don't know if they're worth it for absolutely everybody. So we'll get into that. Jim Green is not the name of Gareth's father or grandfather or anything. It's the name of a small frog that stands near South African rivers and then gets eaten by fish. I wanted to figure out what specific frog it was because Jim Green is a nickname. Couldn't find that out. I'm hoping Gareth can send me a picture of one of the frogs, then I'll identify it. But I think it's the natal cascade frog. Fun fact, the, the mating call of the R cascade frog is a faint series of low grating clucking noises. That sounds sexy. In the 1940s, while serving on the staff of the West African Brigade in Burma in India, a man was given a chore by his family. While you are serving, look for boots and shoes that are cool that you can take back to our shoe factory. That man, who has a very recognizable last name, found the Feldschoon Feli, which is Afrikaans for field shoe, comma, leather. I think, I don't speak Afrikaans, that was my best shot. I hope I pronounced it right. He found the Feldschoon Feli, which was originally worn by boar farmers. Oops, it's not boar farmers like a little piggy it is a boar farmer who they don't even farm boars was originally worn by boar farmers and then was picked up by servicemen but it was a very popular arid climate leather field shoe it was the perfect shoe kind of boot. This field shoe or field boot was made out of rough out leather. It had two to three eyelets on it on average. It had a very thin, comfortable, grippy sole and it was made using stitched down construction so the bottom of the boot flared out. It was brought to England by a man named Nathan Clark. Clark's Desert Boots. <sighs> Is something wrong, babe? Nothing. Are you sure? I just wish there was a way I could get 90% off anything without a coupon. Well, you can. All you have to do is use Carrot's deal hop feature. Can you tell me about it in under 30 seconds? Yeah, it'd be easy. Step one is to download the Carrot extension on Google Chrome, or you can download it from the iOS app store on your iPhone. Oh, wow. I know. Step two. Wow, we're already at step two. We sure are. Now it's the easy part. Just go shopping. I think I'll buy another orange. Or something in the fashion world. Step three, Carrot's turn. Carrot uses AI through DealHop to find you the best possible deal on anything that you're looking at, up to 90% off. Wow. I know. And not only that, if you're the type of person that has a ton of tabs open, 
all the time, just make a carrot collection and stuff them all there so you can stay organized. So all I have to do is download the extension on Google Chrome or the App Store? That's all you have to do, and all of a sudden, you'll be saving a ton of money without even using a coupon. Thank you, Carrot, for sponsoring this video. Yeah, thanks. You heard it here first, or you probably heard it in a bunch of different places. You had 84 years to hear about it, but Clark's Desert Boots, they brought the Felchkun Feli to England first, and then more importantly for the popularity of it, they brought it to post-war United States of America, where people were like, oh my god, I hope someone invents sneakers soon. Boom. Clark's Desert Boots, right in between. They're not super casual, but they're still way more comfortable than regular shoes, and they exploded in popularity, and Clark's Desert Boots became the de facto face of that silhouette, of that design style. But it originated in South Africa, and it is still in the DNA of Jim Green Boots in my opinion. Jim Green makes their own fellies, which are a different beast than Clark's. They have a steel shank in them, an extra eyelet, they use rough out leather. I would say fellies from Jim Green are what boar farmers boor would still use as opposed to desert boots, which are something that you'd wear really more for a dress reason. I have Jim Green fellies, obviously, and they're a very important part of this video, but I forgot them at home. So just home B-roll today, sorry about that. Okay, so the question becomes, how do I take fellies and upgrade them until they become the perfect African Ranger boot? Again, my theories here, here's a list. Number one, I keep the three eyelets that the Feli has, but I add two speed hooks so I can tighten the boot on the foot and increase stability when running. Number two, instead of soft, floppy leather, we upgrade to very thick, robust leather, and what you're looking at here is wild buffalo hide that's even thicker and more robust than standard African Rangers. More on the wild buffalo hide in a second. Jim Green does some crazy things to get this leather. Number three, pad the ankle. This not only is more comfortable, but it also helps seal your foot in more when it's tied tight and protects your ankle from things that may hit it. Number four, instead Instead of having a floppy regular tongue, you can gusset the tongue so it's less likely for water and debris to get into it as you're running and on the move. Number five is take your already durable boot and reinforce it with two layers of leather where it counts, your toe and your heels. Number six is use stitch down construction and stitch your boots together with 2.2 millimeter nylon threads. Number seven, use some synthetic materials on the inside of the boot so they dry faster when they do get wet. Correction, not adding synthetic materials for water resistance, but rather adding a toe and heel stiffener for added support and durability. My bad. And finally, number eight, use a soft wedge sole so that way when you're creeping through the African bushveld, you're quieter. Also, that right there on my boot is a crazy gash from a wild buffalo. We'll talk about that in one second. So, to me, there's two possibilities. The second one is way cooler than the first. The first one is that the African Ranger was built off of the back of the Felschkun Feli intentionally, and it was just an armored version with tougher leather, different outsole, different eyelet count, and everything like that. The second one, though, is if this boot was truly just a collaboration effort from African Rangers and Jim Green didn't say, hey, this is the base of the boot, then they came up with an upgraded version of the Felschkun Feli, which is considered the greatest boot ever designed for arid climates. And they only proved that statement even more by recreating the bones of the Felchkun Feli once again from scratch. Either way, Felchkun Feli, African Ranger, mwah. So then we finally get to the question, why so cheap and are they worth it? And obviously when I say why so cheap, I mean compared to other boots that are built in a similar way with similar materials, why are these costed lower? Number one, stitch down construction is a lightning fast way to construct boots, so it's cheaper, but coincidentally it's also really the best at keeping out debris and waters and everything like that. It's not the highest grade leather, it uses synthetic materials, it's not using Vibram soles or anything like that, and since this boot is 100% built in South Africa, when it comes to the US, it doesn't hit import duties or tariffs, which is the pain in the butt. I'm ordering a lot of Japanese denim for the next run of Prologue jackets and jeans, those tariffs, buddy. It's really a boot built simply and very quickly with a specific use in mind in order to keep prices down. These have to be affordable for African Rangers, even though one out of every 10 pairs, I believe, is donated to an African Ranger. They still need to be affordable for the people that need them. So would I recommend that you get these boots? Yes, but you have to know what that entails and what these boots are built for. To me, these boots are very function over form. They are very wide. They give your feet a ton of room. The toe box isn't super high. I would like it a little higher for me personally. The construction isn't crazy. The quality of materials isn't insane, but these are just bulletproof tanks that should last you absolutely forever. Editor Mike here. When I say not insane construction or not insane leather, I don't mean not good leather. It's very, very good leather and construction, but it's not insane like what you see on $1,000 boots is what I'm saying, but it's very good. Their main purpose in life is to cover your feet and to protect your feet no matter what and to be very easily repairable when they no longer protect your feet. That is the DNA of this boot and that's it. All right, and finally, my boots are made out of wild buffalo hide. And you may be thinking, did Jim Green go out and shoot a wild buffalo for these boots? 
Not at all, they actually do the opposite. I will read it to you from Jim Green's lips. Each year, hundreds of buffalo are removed from our local reserves for disease and population control measures. With everything on the animal being utilized but the skin, we decided something needed to be done. We sent out a skinning and salting team into a conservancy to gather and prepare these skins for our tannery. These skins were purchased for the reserve, raising much needed funds for a byproduct that would have been disposed of. And that's, besides the boots of course, is why everybody on YouTube loves Jim Green. Rose Anvil, me, Carl Murawski, that's not everybody on YouTube, but you know what I mean. It is because unless Gareth and Jim Green duped us and we're all fools, they are just a rock solid company that makes a good product. They have a really cool mission statement. Gareth just seems like he wants to go run in the Bushfeld all day. And I love that. Makes a really cool company. And you can see that in the DNA of all of these boots. So it's very cool, small brand. Anyways, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching from the bottom of my heart to the top of my eyes. It means an absolute ton that you watch. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope that you tune in next week because that is when I'll see you next or actually maybe sooner than next week.